Module 2, Gathering Information, Strategies for Clarifying and Paraphrasing. Imagine you are talking to a client and they say the following, and I used to be a regular like clockwork, but now I'm not at all regular. I'm just so drained, I can't handle it. I was puking all last night. Um, I'm kind of itchy down there. And when I get out of bed, the room is spinning. And the other weird thing, my boobs hurt like crazy. Did you understand what the client said? Maybe, especially since many of those slang phrases were on Quizlet. But it will often happen that you don't understand what a client says. You might not be familiar with an everyday idiom that they use, or they may speak too quietly or mumble or have a speech disorder. So the ability to check your understanding or to clarify what you hear is crucial. Other times, you may be quite sure that you've understood what the client said. But for their sake and for your sake, you'll still want to confirm the information, especially if it is something that you're documenting. This is just good practice. You'll feel confident knowing that you have the correct information. The client will feel confident knowing that they've been understood. Here are four strategies for clarifying and confirming information. As you listen to the examples, take note of the intonation. In most cases, rising intonation is used so that you don't sound like you're correcting or interrogating your client. When you're not sure you've understood, one option is to very directly request repetition, clarification, or explanation. For instance, you might say, could you repeat that? Could you say that again? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand what you mean. Are you saying that you're constipated? What do you mean by regular? When do you mean, what do you mean when you say that you're not regular? However, this sometimes interrupts the flow of the conversation, and it can sometimes sound a little like you're putting that person on the spot or grilling them. Here are some other strategies that are more subtle and fit more smoothly into the flow of conversation. You can repeat an unclear phrase with rising intonation. When you repeat a vague or unclear word with rising intonation, you are asking the person to clarify. Would you like the chicken or the fish for supper? Fish. The fish? Mm. For sure, one fish dinner coming right up. Here are some other examples. Notice that the lowest point is the stressed syllable of the word the speaker is checking on and the rest of the word group is rising. My number is 780-376-5531. 780-376-5531? My number is 780-376-5531. 780-376-5531? And I used to be regular, like clockwork, but now I'm not at all regular. Regular, like clockwork? Yeah, like I had a bowel movement every single morning. Now I sometimes go a week without a bowel movement. I'm just so drained. I can't handle it. So drained? Yeah, I'm just so exhausted. Another option is to substitute a question word for an unclear word. When you use a question word in the place of an unclear or vague word, you are asking for clarification. You can add in an again if you feel you would like them to repeat their statement for you. And I used to be a regular, like clockwork, but now I'm not at all regular. I'm sorry, you used to be so what again? I was puking all last night. Um, you were doing what all last night? Hmm, I'm kind of itchy down there. You're itchy where? And the other weird thing, my boobs hurt like crazy. Sorry, your what hurts? My number is 780-376-5531. 780-37-what? 780-376-5531. 
5531. 7803765551. What? 5531. Did you notice that the question word has the lowest pitch in the sentence and everything after it is rising? A fourth option is to check your comprehension by paraphrasing and summarizing. If you are certain you have understood, you can just paraphrase or summarize. So you're nauseous and dizzy and just very exhausted. Let's talk about your exhaustion. You can add in rising intonation to invite a response. So you're constipated. You've been vomiting all night. That's no fun. So you're nauseous and dizzy and just very exhausted. You can end with a tag like right, a, hey. They also invite a response. You're constipated, right? You've been vomiting all night, hey? That's no fun. You're exhausted, eh? And finding it hard to manage. So you're nauseous and dizzy and just very exhausted, right? You can use a phrase or a question to more formally show that you are summarizing or paraphrasing and to formally invite a response. So you're saying that, did I get that right? Let me see if I've understood. Is that correct? So, is that right? So what I hear from you is, did I catch everything? We often use more formal phrases and questions for longer summaries and paraphrases. So you're saying that you're constipated and exhausted and you've been feeling nauseous and vomiting. Did I get that right? Let me see if I've understood what you said. You are itchy in your genital area and you are also experiencing nausea and breast pain. Is that correct? So, you're nauseous and dizzy and just very exhausted. Is that right? So, what I hear from you is, you are experiencing dizziness, exhaustion, nausea, and breast pain, and you've been vomiting for the last week. Did I catch everything? In this video, you learned the following four strategies for confirming and checking your comprehension. Number one. Directly request repetition, clarification, or explanation. Number two, repeat an unclear word or phrase with rising intonation. Number three, substitute a question word for an unclear word and use rising intonation. Number four, check your comprehension by paraphrasing and summarizing. Let's practice. Here are the references used in this PowerPoint.